Now on BBC Two, showing for the first time in over 30 years, Peter Watkins' acclaimed film recreates the brutal events at Culloden. Wednesday, April 16th, 1746. This is the advance battalion of an English government army of 9,000 men. Their objective, Culloden Moor, four and a half miles southeast of the highland town of Inverness. Their purpose, the destruction of the highland Jacobite army of rebellion, a tired, ill-administered force of less than 5,000 men who wait just beyond the top of this ridge. Sir Thomas Sheridan, Jacobite military secretary, suffering advanced debility and loss of memory. Former military engagement, 56 years ago. Sir John MacDonald, Jacobite captain of cavalry, aged, frequently intoxicated, described as a man of the most limited capacities. John William O'Sullivan, Jacobite quartermaster general, described as an Irishman whose vanity is superseded only by his lack of wisdom. Prince Charles Edward Stuart, Jacobite Commander-in-Chief. Former military experience, 10 days attendance at a siege at the age of 13. You must understand, without putting too fine a point on it, that the army here is in a total shambles. I've got half my company missing. I just can't find them. They've gone off somewhere to sleep. Your Royal Highness, why exactly are Mr. Sheridan, Sir John MacDonald and Mr. O'Sullivan handling the administration of your army? Because I chose them. Because I consider those gentlemen to be utterly trustworthy and competent. The first thing my men will find when they do awake is the enemy on them, cutting their throats. James MacDonald, taxman, senior officer in a ruthless clan system who has brought with him onto the moor men whose land he controls. Alistair McWurich, subtenant of a taxman, owns one-eighth of an acre of soggy ground and two cows. Alan McCall, subtenant of a subtenant, owns half share in a small potato patch measuring 30 feet. Angus MacDonald, servant of a subtenant, he owns nothing. Lowest in the clan structure, he is called a cotter. This man is totally dependent on the men above him in the clan system. They in their turn on the taxman, they in their turn on this one man, the man who has brought them all onto the moor. Alexander MacDonald, called in Gaelic Machichruel, chief of the MacDonalds of Kepoch. The owner of all his tenants' land, the rent he has charged them, is to fight with him as clan warriors whenever he decrees. This is the system of the Highland clan, human rent. I hold my land from Machruachan as my father did by bringing him 20 fighting men from amongst my tenants. These I have brought. To this man, who is rent, today's battle is a matter of honor. I'm Mrs. 
I fight today because it is an honor to be with my chief, Machgich Grün, and because my father fought beside his father. To this man, who is rent, the battle is a matter of revenge. From his sapper to Toshuk, the Machgich Grün, the ocean to Herloch, it's an ocean to Kaimblich, the young Kadrit at Machro, called the Menagen. I fight first for Machgich Grün, then for Charlie. Then, because the Campbells who did steal my cows are with the enemy. I have also raised over a hundred men from Rannach. Some were unwilling. With these, I used force. Alistair McWurick told by his taxman that if he did not fight, he would have his cattle taken and his roof burnt. This is the system of the clan. A system that has brought onto the moor over 4,000 men Men from Argyll and Inverness, from Moidot, Appin and the Isles, Catholics, Episcopalians, Presbyterians, the Macdonalds, the Macleans, the Chisholms, the Camerons, the Farksons, the Frasers, men of 14 major Highland clans. Men like this, Donald Cameron of Loch Eel, chief of the powerful Clan Cameron, fearing for the survival of the ancient and ruthless society to which he belongs. Because he is here on the moor, most of the other chiefs are here. Because he is here, Kepok is here. Because I feel that the act of union with England is a betrayal. Because Prince Charles is a Catholic, and I am a Catholic, and the king in London is a Protestant. Because Charles is part Scot, and I am a Scot, and the king in London is a German. Prince Charles Edward Stuart, the centre of all these men's hopes, himself half Polish. Age 25 and four months. Son of the exile James the Pretender, he landed in Scotland nine months ago, raised the clan army on a highland surge of nationalism, marched to Derby and came within an ace of toppling the Hanoverian dynasty and regaining the throne for his father. Though since forced to retreat back into the highlands and despite all evidence to the contrary, Charles remains supremely confident both of victory and his welcome by the English people. King George II is both a usurper and a tyrant. He's kept my father's crown by sla enslavering all the people of his island. He's deemed unpopular, and I know that once victory is mine, the people of England will welcome me. Lord George Murray, age 51, Lieutenant General in the Clan Army. As their commanding officer, this man forged the undisciplined Highlanders into an army that not only almost reached London, but that also twice reduced superior English forces into a panic-stricken rout, first at Preston Pans, then at Falkirk. Blunt, imperious, this man has bitterly quarreled with Charles over the chaos in the army administration and over the choice of this battlefield, chosen by John William O'Sullivan. Flat, treeless, devoid of shelter, ideal for the employment by the British Army of its cannon and cavalry. And from behind the shelter of these walls, which O'Sullivan has refused to pull down, Lord George Murray also fears both crossfire and outflanking 